Good evening. Good evening, great and new light in the listening audience. Welcome to Bible study. Welcome to Bible study tonight. We are live. Look, you know, it's just time, um, in a long time, <laughs> doing it on Zoom. So y'all all bear with me as I, <clears throat> you know, teach from um, behind the desk. Ah, look, y'all. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you had a day. It's um, Dr. Scott, and I have the pleasure of um, teaching for this month. And I have a hot topic we're going to be talking about. Got some surprises for you down the road. So just hope you're getting settled in right now. You know how we do. Get your Bible, get your book, get your pen, get ready to um, hear from the Holy Spirit. Did anybody come to get a word? It's midweek Bible study. You know, sometimes on Sunday, you get full, get your tank full. And in the middle of the week, you need a little something, something, you know? And I hope that the Holy Ghost blesses me to give you a little something, something tonight, you know? It is definitely like meeting in person. And I look forward to um, seeing your smiling faces in person soon. <laughs> but for now, we're going to meet online. So please share the broadcast. Um, we're going to open up in prayer. We have a series that the Lord want me to talk about. I'm like, Lord Jesus. But it's better to be obedient than to do it your way. So we're going to go with God. You know, we want to hear from God. We don't want to hear from me. We want to hear from God. Amen. So um, we're going to open in prayer. And um, we're going to kick it off tonight. I'm going to tell you what the topic is in a second. But we're going to pray it through first, okay? <laughs> so um, I love y'all. It's good. Just come on in. Come on in. Give me a chance. Come on in. Get your coffee. Get your tea. Get your water. Kick that. It's time to study. We're going to school. You get to go to school at home. So, you know, be happy about that, okay? <laughs> Anyway, oh, I want to invite you. You can um like type in your questions and stuff, and um you know I'll get to them. Um, so all right, let's go. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just come before you with a heart full of gratitude. Only you, only you, only you. You're the only God, hallelujah, that was willing to sacrifice your life that we might be saved. All the other gods, hallelujah, that they claim to be God, ain't no God. Our God is a God full of love, and you're a God full of forgiveness, and you're a God full of second chance and third chances and fourth chances. You don't judge us according to our sins. In fact, the moment we confess and repent, you it's as if we've never done them. You don't bring them up in our face. You don't make us feel bad. You don't how do you let, have us living in condemnation, but you have us living a life full of hope and joy and love. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we just invite you to have your way in this live feed. It's all about you. Hallelujah. We have acknowledged you as our Savior and as our Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you just word my mouth. Give me what to say. Give me how to teach. I can't do it without you, but I can do everything with you. Anoint my tongue. Think through my brain. Show me what to say. Meet the needs of the audience. We are your people. You are the shepherd. Hallelujah. You lead us beside the still water. Yeah, you do. Hallelujah. You satisfy the longings of our soul. Hallelujah. We're so happy to be called the children of God. What an inheritance. We have as a result of what you've done, your blood, your blood, your blood. It paved the way for us to come back home. And now that we in the kingdom, Lord, we want to know what the requirements are, what you would have us to do, how you would have us to live. We want to live a life that's pleasing unto you. And Lord, with that being said, I just thank you right now for the um, Bible study tonight, which you've laid on my heart. I thank you for wisdom and knowledge. I thank you, Father God, that you're doing what you do meeting every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Speak through my lips, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Bless those that are listening. Bless those who are going through. Bless those who had a tough day. Bless those who are just tired mentally, physically. Bless the single moms. Bless the single dads. Bless those that have, you know, financial needs, emotional needs, whatever the need is. You said you would supply our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And we know you're rich and you got it like that. So we're asking in faith, right now that you just do what you do, the way you want to do it, how you want to do it. And we give you the praise in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I got Sister Michelle here with me. <clears throat> she might be doing some reading tonight. So if you hear another voice, that's who that is. Okay. Because, you know, I'm new at this. So listen, honey, you know, I started asking God, what do you want me to talk about? And, you know, <laughs> Yeah, he gave me a topic, and I was like, really, 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 really? He said, yeah, really, 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 really. So one thing I have come to learn in my walk with the Lord, 
we're really good at talking about what Jesus has done. You know, Jesus paid it all. You know, Jesus, when he lived the earth, he, you know, he, he rerouted the devil. He told him where to go. He was full of the word. And the scripture says in Acts chapter 10, I think 10, 19, somewhere in there, that, you know, how Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, amen, who went about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. God was working with him. You know, we know the goodness of God and how he healed the sick, literally raised the dead, literally, you know what I'm saying, fed the multitudes, literally. I mean, we can talk about Jesus and what Jesus has done all day, all night. We can talk about the goodness of God, you know, how he sent his only begotten son. Who would do that? He died in our place. We can talk about, you know, how he was whipped, how he was you know, put in a tomb, how he got up three days. And all of that is so true. But I remember growing up, they had the song they used to sing. They used to sing, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free. And they would say, no, no, no. There's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. And I'm like, what do you mean? There's a cross for me. In other words, Jesus showed the way. Yeah, he's the first fruit. He showed how it was to be done. We sang the song on Sunday. He said he came from heaven to earth to show the way. Okay? So when I think about, you know, if someone's showing me something, that means they want me to do it. They want me to follow. You know, they, they're, they're showing me how to do it. Then they say, okay, come on now, you do it. And so in the lesson the Lord was laying on my heart to talk about was the cost or the qualifications of being a disciple, of being a disciple. You know, so Jesus in the book of, um, in the book of, what is it? Um, tell me, Matthews, what is it? Matthews chapter what? Is it 15? Chapter 16. Matthews chapter 16, verse 24. Y'all remember this. I know you do. Matthew 16, 24. And um, I'm, I'm going to read it out of the CSV right now, but I'm going to quote it in the King James, okay? Because I want to make sure we all understand but um, I'm using, um, yeah, this is the Christian Standard Bible. The Bible, remember the book, the basic instructions before leaving earth, using the manual, the Bible, B-I-B-L-E. Okay, and so when I open up Matthew 16, 24, it actually reads like this. <clears throat> then Jesus said to his disciples, and I thought about disciple. You know, disciple is a learned one. Discipline is the root, root word. Discipline, discipline. Jesus said to his disciples, and it's in quotes, <laughs> in red in the old Bible, right? In red. It says, if, if, that's the first word. So if it's, if it's a condition, if it's a conditional statement, if, if you want something, if you want me to do something, this is what you got to do. If I say if, you know, if you meet me at my house at um, 7.30, you know, I got $100 for you. That's if you meet me at 7.30, not 8 o'clock and not tomorrow. Meet me at 7.30, I got $100 for you. If you do that, then I'll do this. Well, back in the day, I was a programmer, and we had, um, you know, if, then, else. That's how the syntax works. If you do this, then I'll do that. But if you don't do this, then, I'll, you know, then it's if, then, else. If, then, else. In other words, if you don't do it, then else else, something else will happen. So Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, if, if anyone, anyone, anyone wants to follow after me, okay? If you want to follow after me, he's talking to his disciples. He says, if anyone wants to follow after me, here's the first qualification. Write it down. First qualification. If you want to follow after me, Jesus is talking to his disciples. If you want to follow after me, yeah, I do, then I want you to deny yourself. Qualification number one, deny yourself. Okay, self-denial. What does that mean? You know, the stuff you like? <laughs> yeah, I heard a preacher recently say, he said, um, deny yourself, not indulge yourself. Mm -hmm. If you want to follow after me, I'm going to need you to deny yourself. Deny some of the things you enjoy doing. Not some. I want you to deny what you like. You know, deny yourself. Put it on hold, you know. Tell yourself no. 
I know, I know, I know, but it is what it is. This is if you want to follow me. This is the qualifications of being a follower of Christ. Lesson number one, qualifications of being a follower of Christ. If you want to follow after me, you're going to have to deny yourself. No one's going to do it for you. You're going to have to do it. Wow. Really? Yeah, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to do it yourself. That hurts, I know. And then it says, take up your cross. What? You want me to deny myself and then you want me to take up a cross. Now, when I think about a cross, you know, we talk about how Jesus was walking on the road, you know, and on his way to Calvary, you know, and how he fell down and the black man helped him up. And, you know, I think he said he fell down three times on one occasion, you know, but he fell down carrying the cross. You know why? The cross was heavy and his body was weak. He had been beaten all night long. He hadn't had no sleep. And now he got this big cross on him. He had, he, you know, that's a cross when you carry a cross. It's heavy. You know, we have these prayers. I know I used to pray them all the time. I'm like, but just take it away. Just take it away. You know, if you want me to just take it away. <laughs> you know, Paul, you know, Paul prayed that prayer. He's like, look, I could get so much done if you just take this thorn out of my flesh. You know, it's hindering me. And God said, um, no, he prayed three times. Look, I'm trying to do it your way. I'm, I'm, I'm following you. I'm going after you. I'm, I'm doing everything I can. To, but I got this, this thorn in my flesh. It's, it's making it really difficult for me to, you know, do and serve you the way I want to. Lord, just take away this thorn. Just, I'm not trying to carry no, uh-oh, not trying to carry no cross. Uh-oh, I'll put the thing down. <laughs> the screen went away. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I was close to the laptop and the screen went away. But anyway, he's like, I'm not trying to carry this thorn. I'm trying to do my work for you, but I'm being hindered every time I turn around. It's some type of persecution. Something going on. I need you to intervene. Help me, Jesus. Come on, help me so I can do more work for you, so I can be more productive, so I can be fruitful. That's a, you know, a kind prayer. That's a good prayer. I'm trying to work for you. And God said, no, I'm not going to do it. You're like, what? He said, because. My grace is sufficient. What is grace? God's enablement, God's ability. You know, he's putting his super on your natural, which you can't do in the natural. God is giving you the grace to do it. He's giving you the grace to go through the hard stuff, you know? And it's like, um, and it's like, because when you're weak, then I'm strong. In other words, you fall on your knees and you call on God more than you ever do in life when you're in a hard place because you know you're pressing in. You got to seek God. You're praying through it. You're like, God, this is hard. I'm carrying the cross. <laughs> you're like, yeah, and I'm helping you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to strengthen you. But I'm going to need you to, number one, what's the first qualification? Yeah, deny yourself. Um, I'm going to come back to that. I got to stay here because this is what the lesson God told me to talk about. There's a scripture in um, Proverbs, and I think it's Proverbs 19. It says, there are many plans in a, there, there are many plans in the heart of a man, but only the purpose of God will prevail. I think it's that. Can you check? I think it's Proverbs 19, 21. There's many plans. You know, we have a lot of things that we want to do. You know, things that we're good. They're not bad things necessarily. They're just things that we want to do. There are plans for our life, what we want to do. But, you know, we have to remember we're created for his purpose. We're created unto good works. So God created us for a specific purpose and for a reason. But they're his purpose. You know, and so we get mad at God sometimes because it's like, look, I thought I would be, you know, at a certain place that by this time. I thought I would be further along. I, I'm just trying to do, you know, I'm just trying to have a good life and serve you. I'm not, I just... What is the problem? You know, you try to negotiate with God. And let me help you, because see, I live on the street a long time. <laughs> you trying to talk God into doing what you want him to do? You have to learn that he's in control and not you. It's his plan. It's his purpose, not yours. I know, I know it's hard, but I got to tell you the truth because sometimes we get frustrated with God and we get frustrated with church. We get frustrated with Christians. We say this stuff don't work. You know, we mad, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're not happy. We're just muddling through life. We're just going through the motions, but we're not satisfied. We're not happy. We're not, we don't, we know, you know, sometimes you just do things because you're a creature of habit, but your heart is not in it. You have serving God. You're frustrated. You know, it's like, you know, I pray to God. He don't answer the way I want him to. I told him what I wanted. He didn't do it. You know, he's like, where is he? You know, 
And so we have to look at our motives. So what we're praying and why. Remember, qualifications of being a follower of Christ, of being a follower of Christ. First thing, we deny ourselves. Self-denial, you know? Bible says in Romans, remember eight, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We crucify our flesh, okay? We consider ourselves to be dead to sin and alive to God. And so it's not about your plan. I can't say it enough. It's about his will for your life, not your will and want him to do what you want him to do. Deny yourself, take up your cross. So once again, we're talking about um, self-denial. You know? Yeah. You got to do it. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. We wonder sometimes why there's no growth in our life. You know, sometimes you can read the word and you say, God, you said in your word, you withhold no good thing. No good thing will you withhold from those that love you and walk up right before you. You said, Lord, in your word, Lord, that if I just pray and believe that I receive, I will have the petitions that I'm asking of you. You said, ask, seek, not. I'm doing the stuff. I'm doing the principle. Where's the stuff? Where's the promise? Okay, let's go back to the motive. Let's go back to the heart, okay? Are you praying your will or his will? See, Jesus in the garden, he knew why he came. But when it came time to pick up that cross and go through that, he's like, look, mm -hmm. is there another way? Okay, look, I know who you are. You can do anything. You're God. I know we talked about this ahead of time, but now that it's time for me to, you know, go down this road and take up this cross, I, I changed my mind. Um. You know, the Bible says he was praying so hard. It was like drops of blood. He was like, look, this is not my plan. You know, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do it. It's okay. It's okay to tell God how you feel. But Jesus ended that prayer. He said, nevertheless, nevertheless, it's not about what I want. It's not my will. It's not my will. Let your will be done. If any man wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself. You see Jesus in the garden praying for his will, but then he said, okay, but, 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 nevertheless, not my will. Let your will be done. And you know what? The father didn't take the cup away. As much as he loved his son, as much as they had a connection, he said, no, nope, this is the way that I have chosen for you to go. This is the road I want you to walk through. I want you to be beaten. I want you to pay a cost. I want you to die on a cross. I want you to be separated from me. I want, to, this is how I'm going to use your life to redeem mankind back to myself. This is what I have decided for your life. What happens when God asks you to do something that you just don't want to do? You deny. You surrender. You say, yes, Lord. I was going to have him play this song. Yes, Lord. And not just when he says what we want, but when he says what we don't want. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He's just not Lord in the bad times and the good times. He got to be Lord at all times. His will, not mine. Okay, we're talking about the qualifications of being a follower of Christ. If any man, if any man, that's gender, it's not man, it's male and female, you know, mankind. If any man wants to be my disciple, ain't that what it said? Mm -hmm. He said, um, then the first step, we said you got to deny yourself. Second step, you got to take up your cross. And third step, how are we doing, y'all? Y'all still with me? <laughs> and the third thing, these are qualifications of being a follower of Christ. He says, um, then you follow me. You got it? So first thing, deny yourself. Second thing, take up your cross. Third thing, now start following. What? Where are we going, Jesus? <laughs> he said, just follow. Mm, but Lord. Can you um, give me the role plan? Let me see if I want to go this direction. Think about it. You know, they say when the children of Israel left Egypt, you know, that God took them the long way around. You know, he led them to the, to, to the water, right? You know, they were going to go through the desert. You know, and the reason why there was a shorter way, there really was a shorter way. But what happened was he saw they weren't ready yet. They weren't ready to handle war. They weren't ready to fight. They weren't ready. You know, so sometimes we think God is delaying us and holding us back. And hey, it's a shorter way if we go this way. It's like, you're not ready, boo. You're not ready. I got to strengthen you. I got to get you ready for the journey. You know, but he can't, you know, we don't want to hear that. We're like, just get on with it. I've been waiting a long time. They had been in slavery for 400 years, 430. 400 years they had been in Egypt, right? They were ready. Give me the promised land. I'm ready. 
I'm ready. I, I, I know you think you're our baby, but you're not ready. Mm -hmm. You're not ready. There's that. Some of us want to be married. Karen's okay, getting older. Okay. Some of us, you know, we have opened up doors in our life. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to deny ourselves. It's like, well, you know, I'm already not doing this. Why can't I have that? You know, I go to church, you know, I'm good to my mother, my family, you know, I, you know, I treat people right. All I'm asking is for a little bit, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Whatever your cross is, you know what I'm saying? There's some things in life that are just not good for you. You can see other people doing it and you're like, well, how come they get to do it? They ain't got to do it now. God wants you to be obedient to his will for your life, okay? And your plan might not be the same as their plan. You remember, I remember there was a, um, when Jesus had risen from the dead, right? And then he had said Peter, right? Peter had denied him and he went and got Peter and he restored him. And, you know, remember how he said, if you love me, Peter, do you love me? He said, I love you. And he said, feed my sheep three times, right? So Peter's restored to all eating fish, all the disciples, everybody together. And Jesus, and Peter looks over to the disciple whom got, whom he, whom Jesus loved. Now, you know, John wrote the book, so that's how he referred to himself. Mm -hmm. So he looked at John and said, well, what about him? Because the Lord had revealed to Peter, when you get old, you know, someone's going to take you to a place you ain't going to want to go. He was talking about the way he was going to die and how he's going to glorify God with his life. But Peter heard that and he said, well, what about him? How about that? And Jesus said, what does that have to do with you? Sometimes we get so caught up. Hallelujah. You're looking at somebody else's life. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know the plan God has for them. But the plan he has for you requires you to go this way. And so just like the children of Israel, let me tell you, 11-day journey took 40 years. You know why? They were murmuring. They were grumbling. They were complaining. They're like, what? I don't want that, you know, and complaining will get you nowhere with God. And there's a lot of Christians that are not moving forward in their Christian walk with God. You know why? Because they're compromising, because they're deciding that, you know what? It don't matter. I can do this. I can do that. We can enumerate different types of sins. You know the doors that you allow in your life that you compromise and say, well, God know my heart. He know my heart. He sure does. He knows that you're not studying, doing in his way. You're bent and determined to do what you want to do, but you want God to rescue you the moment you get in trouble. You are hindering your life. You're not fulfilling the purpose of God in your life because you're not willing to humble yourself and follow him. The third step is follow. So you come to church, you gave your life to Christ. You said, I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my savior until he starts giving you certain requirements and things he wants you to do. He wants you to lay down this. He wants you to not go there. He wants you, you don't want to do that. You want to keep doing what you want to do. Well, you know, the Lord knows. And he says, okay, have it your way. You know, he used to say, you never want God to say that. You have it your way. Because we know where our way done led us to, to destruction. <laughs> so listen, listen, I'm just trying to help because the Lord told me that I'm supposed to do a series on obeying God. Okay, what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Okay, a follower. You know, the power of the Lord is available to all those who believe. God would never ask you to do something without giving you the ability to do it. You know? He's going to help you. You know what I'm saying? He says, if you humble yourself, right? You know, what is that? He said, if you humble, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord that he may lift you up, okay? But if you're strong and rebellious and, and just sit and bend and doing it your way, and you don't care, you don't want correction, you don't want no one telling you anything, we can, we're going to look at one more scripture tonight. I promise. I'm not fussing. I'm just telling you, okay? Because, you know, uh, the body of Christ, Hallelujah. It still belongs to him. Amen. And he, I used to say, I heard it probably because I was stubborn and rebellious. That's how I, you know, I'm, don't be like me. Don't be like me. You know what I'm saying? But God don't have no child that he cannot raise. You know, he wants to lead you gently. You know, come on, baby. Come this way. You know, but some of us are so obstinate. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to take out a whip. <laughs> He loves you, but you have got to obey. So the challenge tonight as we go through the series is to judge your heart. Pick it up. Are you willing to, willing, starts with willingness. No one gets there overnight, but
But the steps to being, a, a, the qualifications, the steps to being a disciple of Christ is first, you got to deny yourself. Secondly, you got to take up your cross daily. You know, sometimes we do it for a day. <laughs> And I'm like, shit, this cross is this cross is happy. I don't feel like carrying it over the weekend. I, you know, I'm laying it down for a while. I'll come back and get it. Okay. No, baby. It's a daily walk. It's a daily decision. A daily decision. We got to make a daily decision to follow him. And follow him. Where he leads me, I will follow. They used to sing the song. Where he leads me, I'll follow. I'll go with him, with him all the way. If it's through a valley, if it's through a hard time, it might be through unemployment. It might be through, um, you know, your mate of 40 years might have passed away and you're just so brokenhearted. So you might be a widow. You might be, you wanted to be married and now you're 60 and you're still not married, still single. Maybe you wanted to have a mother. Maybe you wanted a business, you know, and still have the material. Maybe God has made promises to you and you still haven't seen the fruition of them. Will you still trust God? Will you still follow God? Will you still believe that he's a man? He's not a man that he should lie, but he's able to keep his word. And when the right time come, bring you into your promised land. Follow. Follow. Don't stop following. Don't get discouraged. Continue to walk with God and let him lead you the way he wants you to go. Turn to Psalms chapter 1. The book of Psalm. The book of Psalm. The book of Psalm. We're going to look at the first verse. Hallelujah. I hadn't read Psalm in a long, long time. And um, it might be familiar to most of you, uh, maybe. <laughs> um, I'm going to read it out of, uh, what did I say, Christian Standard Version, I think. Um, whatever, you know, whatever Bible you're using, it's, you know, I just like to make it simple. You know, some of us <clears throat> need to make things that are so simple. Oh, as possible, because, you know, we'd be acting crazy, like, what? You know, come read it, what you say, what? Okay. <laughs> so this is um the book of Psalms, the first book written by David, I'm not mistaken. Is that right, David, did he write it? Okay. And so um it says, the way to happiness. That's what the subtopic says in this translation. The way to happiness, okay? <laughs> Number one, verse one, God blesses those people who refuse evil advice and won't follow sinners. Michelle, what is saying to King James? Blesses the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Wait a minute. It say what? God, wait, blessed, right? It say blessed, right? Mm-hmm. What's the definition for the word blessed? Blessed is sound good, right? Anyway, right? Blessed is the man that walketh not, walketh, T-H, you know, on a continual basis. Keep on following after the counsel, right? What is it? The counsel of the ungodly? Is uh -huh. that right? Counsel of the ungodly. In other words, you're hanging out with people who are telling you the wrong advice, and that's what you're listening to. Mm -hmm. He said, blessed are the people who refuse and this channel refuse evil advice. You're not listening to that, okay? They won't follow sinners or join in at steering God. In other words, you know, they made up their mind. I'm not going the way of the crowd. You know, we live in a in a in a in a, in a community in a society right now that a lot of people think the Bible is um, you know, it's it, it you know, it's just not relevant anymore. And my, you know, it's a good book and it has some good principles, but, you know, quite frankly, it just doesn't go with what's going on right now. I mean, you know, I mean, we have so many compromise, even in the body. And I'm thinking, why don't the believers like to talk about sin? God don't change his mind. It's the same book. It's the same law. He's the same God. He says, I'm God. I change not. Okay. So what he said back then, he still means right now. Okay. And he said, if you want to be blessed. If you want to receive my, the fullness of what I have for you, this is what I'm going to need you to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need you to stop hanging out with people who don't love me. I need you to stop taking counsel and advice, you know, with you know, with people who ain't trying to do me. Light and darkness cannot walk in the same way. You know, I, I, someone was telling me, listen, you can be around a healthy person, right? But you can't, you know, just get healthy by being around a healthy person, okay? You know, but it's so funny, you know, you'll be around a person who's out of weight, overweight, out of shape, you know what I'm saying? It's so easy for you to adopt behaviors, you know what I'm saying, that are not, you know, um, good for you. We like that. It's easy, right? You know what I'm saying? But you're going to get the result of 
of, you know, of, of, of those habits that are not, you know, conducive to your body. You know, saying that that are not good for you. Okay. You have to make a choice. Who are you hanging out with? Who are you hanging out with? Who are you listening to? Who's influencing you? Are you hanging out with believers? Are you hanging out with believers? Okay. And you find yourself going back to the ways and things you used to do before you gave your life to Christ. It's easy. It's so easy to fall back. Okay. But God says, listen, if you want to be blessed and stay blessed, I'm going to need you to stop hanging out and taking their advice. And some of this music is just my goodness. Listen to the lyrics. Don't just set anything in your ear gate or your eye gate. You know what I'm saying? Stop it. It says, verse number two, it said, instead they find happiness in the teachings of the Lord and they think about it day and night. But show what they're saying to King James. But his delight mm. is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. We're going to have to break that down one more time. Do it real slow for me. But it say, I think it said, what did it say again? But mm -hmm. his delight. Whose delight? The believers delight. Those that are seeking after the God, those who are, those who want to seek and pursue and live and be a disciple, their delight is in what? The law. The law of what? Of the Lord. The law. This is the book. This is the covenant. This is the promise. His delight is in following the instructions of the Lord. Amen. What he did. And in his law doeth he meditate. They and night. Listen, honey, it doesn't come by osmosis. You're going to have to put some time and some energy in the game, okay? You're going to have to get the book. You can, you know, you can listen to it online. You know, you can, you know, have it played, you know, to you. You can look it on, you know, there's so many ways to get the word of God. So many teachers, so many preachers, so many books, so many songs. You're going to have to spend time, you know, meditating in the law of the Lord. I mean, the word of God. You have to reprogram your mind. You got so much in there. You know, God says, in order for you to be blessed and, and, and enjoy the blessings that I have, I'm going to need you to get full of my word. I'm going to need you to understand what I say, how I want you to live, how I want you to walk, talk, dress, think, think, you know, you got to know him. You can't do him if you don't know him. And he says, his delight. In other words, it's not a burden. It's not a, you remember when you first got saved? I got to watch my time. When you first got saved? You couldn't wait. I know I couldn't. I, you know, I was so in love with God. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't wait to spend time. I wanted to learn everything I could. I wanted to know everything right away. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to read. I wanted to know all the studies, all the books, all the stories. You know what I'm saying? Because we're so excited because we discovered the lover of our, our, of our, of our heart. Nobody can love you like God. And when you feel the peace of God and the joy of God and, and you know, you know, you want to spend time with him. You want to spend time with you. You feel the presence of God. That's joy. That's delighting in the law of the Lord, getting to know him. You know, don't let the enemy, because of the trials, because of the troubles in life, you know, the persecution, the things you go through, don't let anything separate you from the love of God. Remember God's promise. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I don't care what you're going through. I'm right here in the midst with you. You are not alone. Amen. There's a scripture in Isaiah that says, I will hold you by your hand. Okay. You know, the Bible says that he sings over us. He says his thoughts are continual over us. He's always thinking about us. I'm just telling you, he's thinking about him. I'm just talking. Okay. Verse 3 says, they're like trees. The people who do this, the people who practice this principle, they're like trees, right? Growing beside a stream. Trees that produce fruit in season and always have leaves. You ever been to some people? You can just, no matter when you go to them, they always got something to say about the Lord. They got a joy in their heart. They got a smile on their face. They got a word. You know, they're just consistent. You know, it's like, how'd you get to be like that? I be tripping. You know, don't push me to the person. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge. No. <laughs> they're rooted and grounded and planted in the Lord. And they have learned, hallelujah, and all on, on all things to give him praise. Amen. It says those people succeed in everything they do. Now that just sound like a good promise to me. Don't you want to succeed? Don't you want to have good fortunes? Don't you want to be blessed and highly favored? Okay, well, this is how you do it. Okay. And then verse four said, this isn't true 
of those who are evil. They're like straws blown by the wind. Sinners won't have an excuse on the day of judgment because there is a day of judgment. And they won't have a place with the people of God. It says, but verse 6 says, the Lord protects everyone who follows him. But the wicked follow a road that leads to ruins. Listen, um, Michelle, read verse number 6 in the King James. I like it. It says, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Say it again. The Lord, the Lord, you know, the king, the one who made the universe and everything in it. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. righteous. He knows where you are. He knows, he knows, he knows, right? What is he saying about the wicked, though? But the way of the ungodly shall perish. Okay. So this is a this is a this is a rule book. Okay. God is teaching us. We're talking about the qualifications of being a follower of Christ, you know, the, being a disciple of Christ. All right. I wanted to tell you one story, and then I don't think I have a lot of time, but um, okay. Let me tell you one story because it's always kind of cool. Now, this story is found in First mm -hmm. Kings. First King chapter, I think it's, oh, wow. I think I printed out the wrong one. Let me see. Hold on, let me verify. What's it supposed to be First Chronicle? Uh-oh. It's First Chronicles chapter 12. Um, no, First Chronicles chapter 10. Chapter 10. So Michelle's going to look it up um, real quick. Let me see if I can find it. But I'm going to tell you the story because I don't have a lot of time. So this is a story about Solomon's son, Rehoboam. Okay, and let me tell you about Rehoboam. We all know Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. We all know that Solomon, yeah, at the end, he messed up badly. 700, what is it, 700 wives, 300 concubines, or vice versa, it might be the other way around. He had a lot of women, and they led his heart away from God. So he was the wisest, but he died, you know? Well, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't end the way he started, okay? Because he chose to follow someone besides the Lord, and it took his, him off track. We know the song, story of um of Solomon. You know, smart, but not smart, not so smart, because he didn't practice it. You can know something and not do it. What's the point of knowing it if you don't do it? Just saying. Anyway, hold up. So his son, he had a son named Rehoboam, and Rehoboam was after, um you know, after Solomon died, that became the next king. Okay, so when um, Rehoboam was on the um, throne, so the people come to him. They said, you know, we love your father. You know, we served him. But, you know, he kind of made things a little tough on us. Right. And so we just want you to, you know, lighten our load up a little bit. You know, we still gonna, we got you. We're going to still, you know, um, hang tight with you. But, um, you know, can you um, like loosen it up a little bit? You know, give us some breathing room, you know. And so, you know, Rehoboam was like, OK, well, hold up. Let me um, think about it and I'll get back with you in a couple of days. So then he goes to his friends. Remember, we talked about the council, you know, the ungodly. Okay. So his friends are young. Remember, these are older people who have been hanging with his father forever. They just want, you know, a little bit of relief. He talks to his friends. And his friends say, hey, don't give them no break. You need to be harder, if anything. You need to make that work really hard. You need to tell them, look, if you thought my father was hard weight, so you fit get a taste of me. And so he come back, he take the advice, right? And so he comes and he tells them, yeah, well, I heard what you said, but it's in 2 Chronicles 10, 1 through 19, if you want to look the story up. 2 Chronicles 10, 1 through 19. Read the whole story because I'm almost out of time. 2 Chronicles 10, 1 through 19. He comes back to the people. You know, they're waiting to hear what the decision is. And he says, well, if you thought my father was hard, I'm going to be harder than that. Oh, I'm gonna make your, your life really hard. You're gonna serve me, right? And the people are like, yo, oh, uh, I don't know who you think you're talking to, but let me tell you what. <laughs> We're about to leave you and you run this all by yourself. And it costs a divide, you know? And that's when you get the kingdom, you know, they have the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, right? They left him. They're like, We're not doing this. Okay, because he listened to the counsel of the ungodly. He didn't follow the wisdom of the elderly. He didn't consult the Lord. Remember Solomon, like, just give me a wise and understanding heart. No, he went to his friends, his to his home guard, and they said, no, that's what you need to do. He took their advice and, you know, know nothing about Rehoboam, huh? Yeah, because they left him. <laughs> Seriously, you read the story. So tonight, 
I'm just going to wrap it up right now. Sure, I've talked a long time. I want you to, um, this is the first of the series. We're going to talk about um, what it means to follow Christ. We're going to give you some practical examples of the story. We're going to look at the word of God. We're going to encourage you not to be influenced by the world or the music of the world, the ways of the world, some of the policies, some of the laws that are passed. If it does not align with the word of God, throw it out. It is not okay to lower the standard because everybody else is doing it. He called you out, you know? He said he called you out of the world. You belong to the kingdom of God now, and he has a code, and that's the way he wants you to live, behave, dress, walk, talk, you know? And it's all in the book. But you're going to have to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. And he has a good life in store. But those are the requirements. If you want to be a disciple of Christ. I love you. This is the first lesson of many. Hope you got some of the lesson tonight. I'll be back next week for more. <laughs> I want you to be encouraged. Okay. It's kind of like I was thinking, um, you know, boot camp. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, when you first sign up for the army or the navy or whatever, you got to go through boot camp. And the first thing they do is they strip your clothes, cut your hair. You know, they say, you in the army now. <laughs> and they train you and on a whole new way of thinking, a whole new way of life is introduced to you. When you're in the kingdom of God, it's a wonderful place to be. But you don't get to run the ship. You don't tell the, you know, sergeant of arms, you don't, you don't get to direct the ship, the traffic. You don't tell them what you're going to do. They tell you. And the Holy Spirit has been sent to instruct us in the way that we are to go. Now, you don't have to. I highly advise you, but you don't have to. But if you're going to be a Christian, a follower of Christ, then these are the requirements. You're going to have to do it his way. And I promise you the results are so worth it. So we looked at Psalm 1 tonight. We looked at um, First um, Chronicles, if I'm not mistaken. No, nope. first, what we look at? I keep saying first. It's second. Second Chronicles 10, 1 through 19, a story of someone who didn't listen. And, of course, we um, looked at the foundational scripture, which is found in Matthew 16, 24. That's going to be our foundation scripture. If you have any questions, feel free to write it in the chat. I love you. I'm going to pray us out. And um, we'll be back next week. So, Father, thank you for your word. Your word, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Hallelujah. David said, how can a young man keep his way clean? Hallelujah. Right, by hiding your word in our heart. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Father, we want to be disciples. We want to be disciplined. We want to do it your way. Not our will, your will be done. In your time, when you say so, it's not about us, it's about you. I pray that you just use us, um, um, use me as I teach this lesson, and that you raise up a, an army of people that you have handpicked, hand chosen um, to be, you know, light bearers, hallelujah, and carry out the gospel, the good news, hallelujah, Father God. Lord, I pray that we wash our garments, that, you know, that you continue to purify us and make us whole, make us clean, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God, convict us of things that we need to change, things that are not pleasing in your life. Let us not compromise and like, well, 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 no, no, no. Let us just humble ourselves, repent, and, you know, put it down and pick up the cross and follow you as you have instructed. Now, Lord, as we move forward throughout this week, be with us, continue to bless us. We love you. We're listening for your voice. We will follow your lead. And I thank you in advance for what you have done and what you are doing. And Lord, continue to bless the listening audience in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. So we never like to close the broadcast without giving you an opportunity to ask Christ in your life. He is the way, the truth, and the light. Trust me. You want to go, you want to go to him. Like, choose him. <laughs> you know, he loves you. St. John 3, 16. We just celebrated Resurrection Sunday. It says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For you, because Adam did it his way, and he got us all in trouble, but Jesus paid the price so we don't have to live a life of defeat, but we can live a life of victory. So if you never ask Christ to come into your heart, ask him today. He's waiting on you. He said, whosoever will, let him come, and you are whosoever. So if you never made that decision, hallelujah, make one today. Also, if you'd like to be a blessing to the ministry, you know, um, you can. We have Cash App. 
you know, you can go to our um, online and you will grab your new light, you know, we you can sell it, you can mail it, <laughs> you know, but be a blessing to the ministry. If God has blessed you, be a blessing. Um, we'll put something in the chat later on and um, tell you how to do it. I don't know it offhand. I love you. It's always a pleasure to teach and um, hopefully you got something out of it. See you next week. Love you. Take care of you. I'm out. Bye.